welcome back to the Paramedic Project. Thanks for joining us once again today. Talking about the basics of cardiac arrest patients. And when we talk about basics, today I want to really focus on adult patients in a largely uncomplicated cardiac, cardiac arrest from a medical etiology. This is kind of the building block or the most basic type of cardiac, cardiac arrest patient you will attend. That's the first thing we're going to look at. Specifically, sorry, we're going to look at why these patients are so important to you as paramedics and especially to you as novice or student paramedics. And second of all, we're going to take the first couple of steps down that treatment pathway with this patient. Really break it down and talk about the absolute basics. And I'll share with you my big tips on how we can start getting this sort of treatment pathway flowing really well, putting the foundations in place. Those first couple of steps that are, that are so important to, to really doing the best by this patient. So why are these adult cardiac arrest patients so important? Uh, first of all, they're probably, well most places you'll work as a paramedic, they're probably the most common cardiac, ar cardiac arrest patients you will attend. So that's the first reason they're so important. It's really important to be able to treat these patients really well because we'll see them commonly. Second of all, is that this is really bread and butter territory for a paramedic. This is the stuff that we should metaphorically be able to hit out of the absolute park. And uh, the third reason they're so important, especially for novice paramedics or, paramedics or student paramedics, is because these adult patients, uh, medical arrest patients, that aren't very complicated, they really form the building blocks or the foundation um, for your progression as paramedics. Now, it's a bit of a scary case, but realistically, there's not a lot of advanced procedures you need to do on this patient. And um, so that's another reason why you really need to be able to treat this particular patient really well, because it forms a, a big building block in your development as paramedics. If you can't do this one really well, you're not going to be able to do a pediatric cardiac arrest really well or a traumatic cardiac arrest really well. So this really forms the building block for other more complicated cardiac arrest patients and in fact, other more complicated cases in general. So it's a really, really important part of our practice and part of your professional development. So now let's start taking a couple of steps down the road to treating this patient. Of course, like any other patient, the first thing we do is a primary survey. We're checking for danger on the way into the patient. Then at the patient, we're eliciting a response. Wake up, wake up. Uh, we might get them to try and squeeze their hands. If there's no response, we then elicit a painful stimulus. And if they're GCS3 at that stage, we can check for a pulse and pulse check says there's no pulse. And at that stage, we can say this patient is in cardiac arrest. And I think it's a really important thing to not only say that in your mind, actually acknowledge that, but I actually like to verbalize that on scene as well. Now, verbalizing that on scene does a few things. It puts your entire team on the same page. Now, you might be thinking, well, if it's just me and my partner, we know this patient's in cardiac arrest, my partner's there with me, they're a paramedic as well. But that's not every type of environment you'll work in. Now, you might, you might witness this patient have a cardiac arrest in the back of the ambulance when you're by yourself, in which case you need to verbalize that to your partner who'll be driving the ambulance to actually pull over, come back, give you some help so you can start treating this patient really well. Other geographical locations or other organizations you might work for, you might work by yourself as a paramedic and get sent out on primary responses by yourself. And, that, and in that set of circumstances, actually verbalizing cardiac arrest puts the call out to bystanders or family members or friends of the patient to actually come and give you a hand. And you don't know who those people are. They might be, be off-duty lifeguards or off-duty police officers or off-duty firefighters. And uh, if you get someone like that as a bystander or someone who's willing to come and give you a hand, then you might get them give you some of the best CPA you've ever seen. So that's going to be great for the patients, also going to be great for your team and great for how you perform in this environment as well. The third thing actually verbalizing that cardiac arrest call does is then it lets the family and friends know exactly what's happening for the patient. And uh, in my experience, the earlier we can do that, the earlier we can open that door of communication between you the paramedic and the patient's family and friends, uh, the easier it is to then keep that communication going and, uh, and the better that communication uh, flow is then. So there are the three big reasons why it's important to verbalize this patient's actually in cardiac arrest. Puts your entire team 
on the same page. And for me on these scenes, that team means me, my partner, other emergency service personnel, bystanders who might help out, and also the patient's family, because we want to do the best by them on these scenes, as well as obviously doing the best for the patient. It's been Paramedic Project. Thanks for joining us. Join us next episode too, where we're going to start talking about the first five minutes in this cardiac arrest uh, kind of treatment flow for this patient. And uh, so that'll give you a few more tips and particularly these big tips about setting up this scene really, really well so that uh, not only this case goes really well, but then those more complicated cardiac arrests will also go really well when you've got these foundation uh, steps in place.